So today is really spreading that message wider so that people understand what social value can do for them, um, and understand where they can embed it in their organisations, think about best practice, and think about new ways of doing things that they might not have thought of before. The Social Value Act has really proved its value over the last few years. I think to begin with, people were a bit tentative, weren't sure whether it would really get much traction in a lot of procurement processes, but having seen how it impacts now on a lot of local authorities and other public sector bodies, it's important and it's impressive. The Social Value Act is one of the most transformative pieces of legislation that I've ever seen. I like to say it's small but perfectly formed and it's making a massive impact in procurement, in changing the way business thinks about, the impact it can make. Uh, so I'm a complete fan. I would be, wouldn't I? Um, but actually it's really practical too. The first thing the Prince Trust is doing is where we can, we're working with commissioners to structure commissioning in the right way to make sure it does deliver the social value that works for the local economic area. Simultaneously, we're partnering with business to make sure that when they are approaching public procurement, they are locking in social value into their bids in a way that is actually deliverable and is transparent and does add value. Crown Commercial Service exists to provide um, frameworks, commercial arrangements across the public sector. And increasingly, our customers are telling us that they won't use deals unless we've factored in social value opportunities for them. So it's a no-brainer to us for us to try and address social value. We work very closely with communities in the built environment. So the latest uh, example for us is we are building a thousand homes uh, as Legal and General Direct, where we give someone a set of house keys as, as LNG down in Crowthorne uh, in Berkshire. We're one of the first developers to produce a contract, a social value contract with that community before anything is built that says, this is what we are going to do in terms of pounds and pence social value here please hold us to account when you become a resident of ours and way beyond that to make sure we have delivered that. Get involved, start. Any journey starts with the first step. I know it's a cliche, but get involved, understand the Social Value Act, understand it, and then invest in it a little. I've got currently seven people working in a legacy pillar for me. The legacy is what we term our social value, our measurement on sustainability, social value, and local engagement, the local pound. Without that being part of your core business, I employ 300 people. Seven is not a massive percentage of people to monitor, engage, control, but it does take a little level of investment. And that's what the Social Value Act has ensured that we can do. So we have been very much uh, leading the social value agenda over a number of years. So we're 115 years old. And we look at it in two ways. We look at it inspire. How do we get the next generation into the built environment? And also how do we create, create opportunities jobs and training for those that are furthest removed from the labour market. I think we've made a lot of progress. Um, I think that we have a long way to go, but I definitely feel an increase in terms of the momentum. Um, I always say that this is about a movement, it's, it's, it's a culture shift, it's about bringing everybody around the table, which I think, um, and I'll put my hand up, you know, in the public sector, maybe we've not done it all the time as well as we could have. We are trying to get better at it, and I think businesses see that, and they're more willing to work with us now because of that. See, yeah, we're very aware of our impacts when we're developing, um, and we see it as a natural extension to a number of programmes we already have in place in terms of our sustainable uh, community engagement, and uh, you know we're very proud of our track record in this area. So it's interesting. We can see how the Social Value Act and social capital can be used for a number of the targets that we have got. If you take homelessness as an example, that is difficult. There's certainly a volunteering aspect of it, but the things that really need to be done around homelessness, change, changes to some of the systems and sort of processes that lead to homelessness in the first place. And then just at the moment, we're lobbying for this housing first pilot to actually provide new accommodation. So it's less easy to see the direct link with homelessness, but certainly if you take some of the wider issues, like how do we share the economic success of the region, the Social Value Act is absolutely in the mainstream of that challenge. The key opportunity would, I suppose, be cultural. We would say that uh, the law is there, it needs to be prescribed, but maybe the challenge for I can make it in our pursuit of creating new job opportunities is to 
change the culture uh, to shall we say um, and make people make those who might be less convinced more convinced by showing what can be done. Oh, what an exciting day we've had today. Just so many you know, different ideas coming forward and so much energy in the room as well. Um, and for me, some of the strongest points were Andy Street arriving, telling us about the transition that he's going to take the West Midlands Combined Authority through, as well as all the local authorities who joined us today, talking about their commitment to embedding social value into how they do procurement and how they deliver planning.